Hey guys, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. Today we're looking at part four of our supercharged LS. We have our Demuse Engineering Adapter Kit that allows us to put a GT500, or in our case, a five liter Coyote TVS blower from Ford Racing on our Truck Norris Cam 5.3 liter. Take a look at the last three videos to get an update, but today we're gonna look at two important questions. First of all, can you use the bypass valve to put the supercharged combination into valet mode, you know, by reducing the boost? The second question is, how much power does it take to actually drive the supercharger? If we're making 700 horsepower with our supercharged combination, how much more power would we make if all of that boost was free? Let's check it out. Before we jump into putting our motor in valet mode using the bypass valve on the supercharger, I want to do a little math. <laughs> Don't worry, it's very simple stuff. So let's take a look at our combination, the L33 5.3 liter with a Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris cam. We had long tube headers on it. We ran it first with a truck manifold. I like to run these motors NA because it gives us so much more data when we know how much power the supercharger or turbo or whatever we're adding to it is. So this was our naturally aspirated motor and we've covered this in a couple of videos now, but run naturally aspirated, our 5.3 liter with the truck Norris cam. Produce 427.7 horsepower and 415.8 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we put our Ford Racing 2.3 liter supercharger on there. It was making a peak of 14.2 uh, pounds out of the horsepower peak and started out making 14.7 pounds. We made 704 horsepower and somewhere near 690 foot-pounds of torque. And here's where the math gets involved. What we want to do is find out how much horsepower this thing makes per pound of boost. So what we do is we subtract the NA number from our boosted number and then divide by the number of or the number of pounds of boost that we ran to get that power gain. So if we have uh, 704 and we subtract 427, we get 277 horsepower. And then we divide that by 14.2, which is how much boost we were making at the top of the RPM range where the horsepower peak was. We get, so we divide 277 by 14.2, and we get 19.5 horsepower per pound of boost. So for each one of those 14.2 pounds of boost, we were getting 19.5 horsepower. So that's an important number to remember because we're going to take a look now at how much this thing made in valet mode and then also compare that to what the motor did naturally aspirated. And we got lots of good data here. And hopefully with all of this, we can kind of figure out maybe how much power it took to drive the blower. Now that we've taken a look at the power gains offered by in the installation of our Ford Racing 2.3 liter TVS blower using the Demuse Engineering Adapter Kit on our Truck Norris Cam 5.3 liter, we made 704 horsepower and around 690 foot-pounds of torque. Let's take let's talk a little bit about the boost curve on this combination. So we started out at the load in down here below 4,000 RPM at 201 kPa or 14.7 to 14.8 psi. During the run, the boost dropped slightly on this run 
to 197 kPa or the equivalent of about 14.2 pounds. This is important because we're going to take a look now at what happened. We're going to put this thing in valet mode by opening the bypass valve. So the bypass valve under cruise opens up based on vacuum and what it does is allow air to recirculate so it helps cool the charge air so when you get back in the throttle you don't get this big gulp of super hot air so the bypass valve works very well and it's used by most oem applications it there it was used on this combination as well and i'm glad that they set it up like that but here's what happens when you open the bypass valve because basically what it does is put a giant size like about this size boost leak in your system and it recirculates the air nicely after it goes through the intercooler but back into the throttle body but what happens is the blower has to overcome that leak and eventually produce some boost and, and we'll see the boost drop quite dramatically but here's what happened when we put this thing in valet mode by opening the bypass valve open completely and what i did was just wire it open you can see we have a dramatic change in power and what i'm going to do is I'm going to move me <laughs> over here so you can see, get a better idea. Run with a bypass valve open, the power dropped from 704 horsepower down to 450 horsepower. And peak torque was 402 foot-pounds of torque. And what happened was we got a dramatic drop in boost. As you might imagine, we have a big hole in the system and we're getting a lot of boost leak. And that boost is actually going down, down through the intercooler, back up out of the bypass valve and then back into the inlet side, which obviously is not ideal because the air, even though it's going through the intercooler, is still going to be hotter than it is just drawing ambient air. But here's what happened to our boost curve. When we open the bypass valve and we have a giant boost leak in valet mode with our bypass valve open, the boost pressure dropped. So on the load in, the boost pressure was only 117 kPa or the equivalent of 2.5 pounds of boost down here around 4,000 RPM. Out at the top of the rev range, we actually had a rising boost curve in valet mode, but it rose to only 135 kPa or the equivalent of 5.1 pounds. So we dropped almost 10 pounds of boost going from the bypass valve functioning to the bypass valve being open. We actually dropped it 9.1 pounds of boost. So here's where our math comes back into play. And this is an interesting thing. So if we take the difference that we made in power, so we subtract 450 horsepower made with our bypass valve open from the 704 horsepower with our bypass valve closed. So we're taking 704, and subtracting 450, we get 254 horsepower. So that's the difference between those two situations. If we then divide that by the number of boosts, the difference in boost between those two combinations, which was 9.1 pounds, remember we had 14.2 pounds at 704 horsepower, and 5.1 pounds at 450 horsepower, because it's a difference of 9.1 pounds, and a difference of 254 horsepower. So if we now divide that 254 horsepower gain that took 9.1 pounds to achieve, we get, we're making now 27.91 horsepower per pound of boost going from the 450 horsepower version up to the 700 horsepower version. So my question for you guys in the comments, please let me know, why now is this worth more horsepower per pound going from one of these combinations to the other than it was just putting the blower on the NA motor? Go ahead and let me know in the comments what you guys think. But this is interesting to, and this is why I like looking at all of this data. It's very important information. And the thing is, if you were just to go by the horsepower per pound of boost that you get on this combination versus the horsepower per pound of boost that you get running the blower on the NA combination, obviously you'd get different amounts. We got one more thing to check out. Let's compare the valet mode versus the NA mode. Okay guys, now using our naturally aspirated combination and comparing that to what our combination did with the blower in valet mode at the low boost, we might be able to kind of back, back calculate how much power it takes to actually drive the supercharger. Now, of course, the best way to do this is put this actually on a blower dyno and the guys at Kenny Bell have done that many times at different boost levels and different power levels. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that because there is a difference in the parasitic loss associated with driving the blower at different blower speeds and at different boost levels and at different airflow levels because the, the amount of work we're 
required to do that if those are different. But let's talk about, let's kind of speculate on what it might cost to drive this blower based on the data that we get here. And we can talk about whether that's right or wrong. So our combination made 427 horsepower NA, and now we know run in valet mode. Our combination made a little bit more power than the NA motor, but not down low because we have a different intake manifold primarily, but we made 450 horsepower at 5.1 pounds of boost. So if we subtract the, the 427 from the 450, we get 23 horsepower, which means the difference there at 5.1 pounds of boost, we are making a whopping 4.5 horsepower per pound. Now here's why that that's not accurate obviously is because we're not spinning the blower right now to just make five pounds of boost. We're actually spinning the blower, you'll remember, to make 704 horsepower at 15 pounds of boost. We're just bypassing that. So right now we're spinning the blower much faster than we need to which means the parasitic loss is actually much higher at that speed and potential power output. If we slowed the blower way down and we're only making five pounds of boost, we would be doing a little better than this and the parasitic loss would go down. So actually the power here would come up a little bit. But here's something that's important. If we take a look at this, we see that even if we drop this by a pound or two, let's say, and so that we were making the same power as we were making NA, at least at the power peak, this tells us something very important. This tells us that when we're running this blower at this speed to make 700 horsepower, it requires the equivalent of three to four pounds of boost just to break even. And as we saw from the very beginning of this, you'll remember when we did our combination going from that blower speed from our NA combination, it required about 19 and a half uh, horsepower per pound of boost. That's what our gain was. So if we do a little math there, it's going to require, here's my speculation, somewhere between 60 and 80 horsepower to drive the blower at this speed, at this airflow level, to make 700 horsepower to spin the blower that fast and provide that much airflow. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think that that's fairly accurate? Obviously, as I said, the best way to do it is put the blower on an actual blower dyno where you're spinning it at this blower speed, where you're flowing this much air to support this much power at this boost level. And then it'll actually tell us exactly how much power is required to drive that blower. And guys would be actually surprised how much it takes. I remember having conversations with people having them tell me, hey, look, it only, it only requires about you know, 40 or 50 horsepower to spin this blower. Well, it does if you're only spinning it to make five pounds of boost. But when you're spinning it to make 15 pounds of boost or 20 pounds of boost and seven or eight or 900 horsepower, the parasitic loss associated with driving these blowers goes up dramatically. It looks like a nice linear curve then at the end, you know, it really comes up on the cam. So let me know what you guys think. How much power do you think it actually takes to drive this blower at this speed? Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn from this little venture? Running our bypass valve on our supercharged combination, opening the bypass valve all the way and putting it into valet mode. Obviously, that is possible. If we open the bypass valve all the way, we drop boost by over nine pounds, making a peak of only about five pounds of boost rather than the 14.2 pounds that we were doing. So we know that if we have the bypass valve closed, we make a lot of boost. If we have the bypass valve open all the way, we make a lot less boost. Here's my question and here's the continuation of the bypass valve movement here. What if we open the bypass valve just a little bit? Can we actually regulate boost? I think we can. The bypass valve has a port on the top and bottom of it. We can regulate it with boost and with vacuum. So using a boost controller, and I want you guys to let me know out there in the comments, have you guys done this? Have you guys regulated the bypass valve to not produce very little boost or a lot of boost, but somewhere in between? Instead of either, either producing 14 pounds or five pounds, could we use it to produce just 10 pounds? or 12 pounds, or seven pounds? Can we use the bypass valve to regulate the boost like you do with a wastegate? Let me know in the comments. The next thing is how much boost or how much power does it take to actually drive the blower? Now we did some speculations on based on the naturally aspirated power output and how much we were making with our bypass 
clothes run at that same boost speed, but at a much lower boost level. Now, obviously, the ideal thing is take this blower, put it on a blower dyno, and we'd know exactly how much power it takes to drive that blower at any given combination of boost and airflow and blower speed. But using the math, we can figure out that it takes somewhere between 60 to 80 horsepower probably to drive this thing at the 700 horsepower power level. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. As always, I'll keep testing.